When dealing with epidermal cysts um, or on the scalp pilar cysts, one of the most important aspects is the history as to whether or not the cyst has been inflamed um, or infected because if it has then it's not going to come out as a complete cyst. It has to be taken out as, a, as an elliptical excision including the cyst remnant. But here I can feel that we have um, the equivalent of an epidermal cyst, albeit an artificial one. And for these I find that working out the approximate size of the cyst followed by the intended incision. When I'm anaesthetizing these I tend with a diabetic uh, needle and syringe to work my way round like this um, with the anaesthetic and then from the anaesthetized side work all the way around and in this way um, the whole of the um, area is anaesthetized but you haven't actually uh, penetrated the cyst. If you want to ease um, the area over the cyst where you're going to um, excise it from then very cautious injection with anaesthetic taking great care not to rupture the cyst may allow a degree of what we would call hydrodilation and dissection to take place which can make it easier to remove the cyst. Once this is anaesthetized the idea is to take a gentle incision over the cyst. This is where time is well spent very delicately cutting through the surface in order to avoid rupturing the cyst. And I tend to do a very small amount of incising followed by the use of the fine tipped iris scissors to gently expose the cyst wall and this is where a gradual approach pays dividends because if you are able to remove the cyst whole without penetrating the wall it's a lot easier and you can then guarantee that the cyst is more likely to come out whole. Here we can just begin to see the cyst showing up as a cyst wall there. So hopefully that is easy to see and with the use of a skin hook we can gently dissect the overlying tissues. And it's a mistake to have too small a incision. If you think you may have difficulty in getting the cyst out, make the incision a little longer. Better to have a slightly longer incision and a completely removed cyst than a small incision and then the difficulty of removing the remains of a ruptured cyst. So here I'm going to just extend my incisions slightly. And you'll be able to see we've now exposed this cyst. Whilst I'm trying to remove it, I often use these blunt curved artery forceps to gently work around the cyst wall, taking care not to rupture it if at all possible, in order to work and to get underneath the cyst because it's here that it is often at its most adherent. Sometimes it can help to put a little bit of pressure on either side so that the cyst is then exposed and in this position you're then able to see what's happening underneath and if necessary use your curved blunt strabismus scissors to release 
the cyst from underneath. Complete cyst. Uh, when it comes to closing a um, cyst incision site, um, it's probably easiest to do interrupted skin sutures. You can sometimes close these wounds with deep sutures, but the skin overlying the cyst is often too thin to enable that to happen. Now, in order to obliterate the cyst cavity and avoid it filling with blood, a mattress suture, maybe one or two mattress sutures, will help achieve this. And in order to do that, we take a large bite and then reverse the needle to take a small bite. When closing a wound in this way, it's important to explain to your patient that they may well feel a ridge over the wound whilst it's healing. You can see that ridge that has formed there. This is entirely normal and it will last for a few days after the stitches have been removed. But in order to complete this, probably a single uh, suture onto the skin, perhaps one more mattress suture is all that's required. Here's a second epidermal cyst which I've been able to palpate but it's not as clear as the earlier one. So again, gently incising over here, sometimes using a skin hook in order to facilitate the initial incisions to hopefully avoid any chance of rupturing the cyst. You'll note that I've turned the scalpel around so that um, I'm less likely to cut through the cyst wall. And at this point I'll go back to my fine iris scissors. I can see there's a cyst there but I can't yet see where the wall cyst wall is. So again very gently with the strabismus scissors. And there we can begin to see the cyst. And this is where it's often safer to use the curved blunt ended iris scissors in order to be able to expose the cyst with the minimum chance of rupture. Here I would want to extend the incision just a little to facilitate removal. So here we have the cyst deeper seated than previous, the previous one. And in order to be able to get this out, I'm going to again use the curved blunt artery forceps to work around the cyst cavity and underneath the cyst cavity. But here I'm not going to, trying to squeeze this out is not going to work. It is a deeper seated um, cyst and therefore I'm going to have to use my curved scissors to gently work around with blunt dissection. And it's time well spent working out how to ease the cyst away from underlying structures. I often find that it's underneath the cyst that you get the greatest um, adhesion to surrounding tissues and therefore that's where I'm going to take a particular amount of care. All the time avoiding the temptation to get hold of the cyst wall itself because if you do that the only thing that's going to happen 
is the cyst will rupture. I'm going to extend this incision just a little bit and that would have been an area that was covered by my anaesthetic. Here we go, just gently easing round. Always trying to respect the curvature of the cyst. And now I can begin to ease it out and remove it whole. My patient informs me that there is a cyst here. I can just about feel it. However, it feels very adherent to the surrounding skin. And in this circumstance, it's likely that this uh, cyst has at some stage ruptured. That causes redness, swelling, heat and pain. And it's often treated as an infected cyst. However, the vast majority of these never rupture like a cyst abscess would. Um, and indeed, all this happened is the content which is effectively uh, rancid oils have caused a reaction and caused the cyst to be, become adherent. So in this case, although this is the uh, approximated diameter of the cyst, I would want to take this out as an ellipse. So this is going to be removed as if it was a solid lesion rather than a cyst. Remember cutting at 90 degrees to the skin and reversing the blade in order to avoid uh, fish tails at the apexes. So I'm now going to use a skin hook to assist me to gently lift up the edge of the ellipse, the apex of the ellipse, and hopefully whilst I'm doing this I will get a glimpse of the cyst, but not always. Sometimes you only see the cyst as you remove it, remove your ellipse from the skin and you can see it from underneath. So here, very carefully, I'm trying to free this apex heading towards what I believe is a cyst under here, but one that I cannot yet see. just beginning to be able to see the cyst. Indeed it is very deeply seated and so this would be one that I would never have removed if I'd made a simple incision through the skin. So with this one I'm having to cut down to the deeper layers in order to remove the whole cyst. So we've got a lot of scar tissue around here that we'll be taking out at the same time as we remove the, the cyst. The areas where this is particularly um, tricky is if there are uh, uh, underlying structures, for instance on the cheek, um, being very careful of the underlying parotid duct, or over the neck posterior triangle of the neck, herbs point and catching the nerve there, the spinal accessory nerve. So here we can see the cyst very much adherent to the surrounding tissues. This I would never have managed to remove um, by my simple incision. So I'm having to delicately remove an ellipse of skin in order to remove the cyst with it. And this will be closed like an ordinary elliptical uh, excision, probably with a combination of deep sutures and skin sutures. So This is a much more involved process than a simple cyst that has never been infected or inflamed. So you can see we're lifting it out. I 
and this would in real life this would be separating from the fatty tissue um, to enable you to very gently remove the cyst and leave quite a large cavity which will be closed with deep sutures followed by skin sutures.